Hey y'all and welcome back to my channel. Thank you for joining me again for another principle in the Dr. Charles Stanley 30 Life Principles Bible Study. Today we will be discussing principle number 16. And today's format is going to be a little bit different than before. I know last week I said it was going to be a little bit different, but this week is definitely going to be a little bit different um, as God has instructed me to focus on one particular scripture here, the actual entire chapter of the book of Psalms, chapter 37. So today's life, life principle says, whatever you require outside of God's will eventually turns to ashes. Let's go ahead and open up with a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you for this time of study. We thank you for being in the midst of our study. You said in your word where two or three or more are gathered that you will be in the midst. So I invite you, Holy Spirit, into this place, into this video, Father God. I pray, Lord God, that your presence and your spirit will be felt throughout all of our homes as we're watching live and on the replay. Help us, Lord God. Show us. Take off the spiritual blinders that we have on our eyes, Lord God. Comfort us, encourage us, equip us, Father God, to be able to face these uncertain days that we have ahead, knowing, Lord God, that there is a way that you have prepared for us, that there is a will that you are desiring for our lives, Father God. So we thank you, Lord God, for teaching us and being with us today in this study. In your son's Jesus name, I pray. Amen. The temptation sits before you, beckoning you to come take it. It looks so much like the desires of your heart that you can't stop thinking about it. An alarm goes off within your spirit. Something just isn't right about what you want to do. Still, the opportunity is so enticing. You're tempted to shake off the warning. You say to yourself, in your most convincing voice. Why shouldn't I have this? After all, other people have so much more. And in the grand scheme of the universe, why would God care about this? Have you been in this situation? Are you in this situation right now? If so, there is help for you. The alarm in your spirit goes off again God's words makes it clear that he does care. You also know that you are up against a skilled opponent. When it comes to deceit, he has a plan that he has tested and perfected. And his schemes worked against men such as Abraham, Jacob, Samson, David, and Peter. But then you look again at the thing you want and like even the garden, it seems to you pleasant to the eyes. So the argument continues. What if this is my only chance to be happy? God wouldn't deny me that, would he? What if God never gives me what I really want? When thoughts like these enter your mind and you find yourself wrestling with temptation, you need to remember the words of life principle 16. Whatever you acquire outside of God's will will eventually turn to ashes. The source of your temptation, the object that seems like the desire of your heart will never satisfy you. However, you will find that it leads you into dangerous territory outside of God's will. So as I began to read this opening statement, uh, this opening introduction about this principle, God just pressed upon my heart to really share with you all what his will is for our lives. And I want to just take a serious moment and truly, truly ask you to just take a moment Block out all of the distractions that you may have going around you and in your mind and in your heart. And really listen to what God is saying today. I pray that it blesses you 
just as much as it has blessed me. This is what God put on my heart to share with you all. What is God's will for us? What God desires most from us is to be in a relationship with him, getting to know who he truly is. To get to know him and his will, it can be found from the first chapter of the book of Genesis to the last word in the book of Revelations. In these books throughout the Bible, you will find God's will for your life and the answers to all of your situations you encounter. He wants you to seek him. Matthew 6 and 33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be provided for you. Everything you desire will be provided, but you must first seek God's will his and his wisdom. When you find his will, you will find your guidance, your peace, your joy, your wisdom, your protection, unconditional love, and above all, you will find God. However, when you are not in God's will, you will be unsatisfied and experience many emotions God never intended for us to have. God created the Garden of Eden to be the perfect living space for us, but he had to but we had to stay within his will, which is to trust and obey him and not fall for the temptations. I know in today's world it seems like those who are doing evil obtain things outside and and obtain things outside of God's will are the ones that are winning. But I want to encourage you today with this Psalm, Psalms 37. Do not be agitated by evil doers. Do not envy those who do wrong for they wither quickly like the grass and wilt like tender green plants. Trust in the Lord and do what is good. Dwell in the land and live securely. Take delight in the Lord and he will give you your heart's desire. Commit or surrender your way to the Lord. Trust in him and he will act, making your righteousness shine like the dawn, your ju justice like the noonday. Be silent before the Lord and wait expectantly for him. Do not be agitated by one who prospers in his way, by the person who carries out evil plans. Refrain from anger and give up your rage. Do not be agitated. It can only bring harm. Don't be frustrated with the things that you see happening around you. Don't let those things tempt you to act outside of the will of God. For evildoers will be destroyed, but those who put their hope in the Lord will inherit the land. Truly trust him. I know we're going through a difficult time, an uncertain time, and we're frustrated. We've been in lockdown for so many weeks and everything, but see this as the will of God. See this as his will. A little while and the wicked person will be no more. Just be patient. Things will change. Though you look for him, he will not be there. Be humble, but the humble will inherit the land and will enjoy abundant prosperity. The wicked person schemes against the righteous and gnashes his teeth at him. The Lord laughs at him because he sees that his day is coming. The evil won't last long, friends. It will not. And God knows exactly when it's going to come to an end. The little that the righteous person has is better. See that God's will is to be a provider for us. Even though you feel like you have little, God provides an abundance. The little that the righteous person has is better than the abundance of many wicked people. For the arms of the wicked will be broken, but the Lord supports the righteous. The Lord watches over the blameless 
all of their days. It is the will of God to be our provider and our protector and their inheritance will last forever. They will not be disgraced in times of adversity. They will be satisfied in the days of hunger. God wants to protect you. God wants to provide for you, but you have to be in his will. Know that he is there for you, but you must stop being agitated. You got to stop walking outside of his will. Walk in the will of God and see the goodness that he has for you but the wicked will perish the lord's enemies like the glory of the pastors will fade away they will fade away like smoke the wicked person borrows and does not repay but the righteous one is gracious in giving those who are blessed by the lord will inherit the land but those who are cursed by him will be destroyed a person's steps are established by the lord see that it is his will to guide and lead you and he takes pleasure in his ways Though he falls, he will not be overwhelmed because the Lord supports him with his hand. The Lord wants to support you. I have been young and now I am old, yet I, I have not seen the righteous abandoned. God is going to justify you, but you must be in his will or his children begging for bread. He is always generous, always lending, and his children are a blessing. Know that God loves you. It is his will for you to be loved by him. Turn away from your evil. Do what is good and settle permanently for the Lord loves justice and will not abandon his faithful ones. They are kept safe forever, but the children of the wicked will be destroyed. The righteous will inherit the land and dwell in it permanently. The mouth of the righteous utters wisdom. His tongue speaks what is just. Change your minds. Change your hearts. Change your perspective. Begin to speak life change from the ways that you've been speaking. Don't let that anger, don't let that agitation, don't let that frustration get to you and tempt you. Instead, speak wisdom. Speak truth. Search God's word. For what it is that you should be doing right now in this moment and in this season. The instruction of, of his God is in his heart. His steps do not falter. The wicked one lies in wait for righteousness and intends to kill him. The Lord will not leave him in the power of the wicked one or allow him to be condemned when he is judged. God has his children in his hands in this season. You may think that everyone else around us that's doing unrighteousness is doing everything and getting ahead. And they're the only ones that are prospering. They're the only ones that are getting ahead. And we're yet suffering and suffering and suffering. See that God has his hedge of protection around us. See that he's still providing. See that he's still leading and guiding us. See that he's still supporting us. See that we are justified. See that we are loved. We are his children. We are his inheritance. Inheritance. We are his bloodline. He will never leave us. He will never forsake us. The salvation of the righteous is from the Lord. The refuge in a time of distress. The Lord helps and delivers them. He will deliver them from the wicked and will save them because they take refuge in him. Trust him. It is God's will that none of us would perish. None of us will perish. This is the will of God. This is what God impressed upon my heart. Read this set of scripture. Go through it line by line. See what it is that God is telling you to do. Just pray over this. Ask God to reveal to your hearts right now what his will for you is. If you're walking in a way that is not pleasing to God, I pray, Father God, right now that you would just reveal those steps that we are taking that is not in your will and show us how to get back to your will. I pray, Lord God, that you would just give us a hunger and a thirst to know more and more about you, Father God. Right now, we have the time, Father God. I pray that each and every one of us will begin to study even the more to truly, truly get into a relationship with you so that we can know who you are. You are our heavenly Father. You are our peace. You are our joy. You are our salvation. You are our strength in the times of our weakness, Lord God. You are our peace in the times of confusion and frustration. You are our protection when it seems like we are being evilly 
wronged. You are our provider when it seems like we are lacking and we're down to our last, Lord God. You are still our provider. You are a way maker. You are a miracle worker. You are a healer. You are a deliverer. You are our power source, Lord God. We can call upon your son's name, Jesus, the one who came, Lord God. You came down to this earth, Lord God, in the flesh of man to save us, to justify us, to get us back into that relationship with you, Father God. So we thank you for it right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you for our salvation. We thank you for our hedge of protection. We thank you, Lord God, that we are in your hands and that we are your inheritance, that we are in your bloodlines, that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. We thank you, Lord God, for lifting up those standards that have been coming up against us, Lord God, for you will raise your hedge of protection around us, Lord God. No weapon formed against us will prosper. Even when the enemy tries to come, they will fall at our sides and we will be able to walk, Lord God. Even though we are feeling like we are walking through the shadows of death, Lord God, you are there with us to protect us, Lord God. You've made a way out of no way for us, Lord God. So we thank you, Father God. We thank you, Lord God. I pray that this lesson has blessed you. I pray that you will begin to pray the, even the more for God's will to be done in your life. I pray that you will step into his will. I pray that you will truly get to know him. I pray that you will truly surrender your all to him, knowing that God loves you. He's ever close to you. He wants to get to know you and you to get to know who he is. He wants that more than anything, to have a relationship with you, to be in love with you and you in love with him. Fall in love with Jesus Christ. Fall in love with our Lord, our God, our Savior. Fall in love with Jesus. You have the time right now. There is no other time like right now for you to fall in love and get to know the one who loves you most. In the Son, in your son's Jesus name, I pray. Amen. Thank you all for joining me. I know this was a little bit different, but I thank you all for joining me today. I pray that this has truly, truly blessed you. I still have more of these bookmarks available. If you would like one, all you have to do is just email me your address and I'll get it right out to you. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next week's video.